Um, so we're going to go to the next, uh, the next demo. And this is, uh, I'm going to introduce Ash Domley. Ash is CEO and founder of Medgal, and Medgal uh, is all about personal health streams. So Ash, take it away. Thank you very much. A pleasure. <laughs> Data by itself has no meaning. When it's organized, connected, applied, it's priceless. And especially it allows us to go ahead and personalize. If we see where the world is going, if we look at the success of companies such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, we understand that hyper-personalization is what's allowing them to succeed. And the purpose and what they can succeed at is that it's about scale. They can deliver very personalized experiences at scale. And even though with the penetration of EHRs, health sensors, and more, we are becoming data rich, we are, however, still care poor. We're still not able to go ahead and break that gap. So if we think about health fundamentally, the core problem is how do you personalize your care decisions at scale? There are many points of care decisions, and in each one of these is an opportunity to personalize that experience and really bring value to the patient. Now, there are two main uh, activities that occur in care decisions. The first is how do you assess the patient's current health? What's the acute and chronic differential diagnosis? Second, based on that, what is the right care plan and options? And so what we have done is used hundreds of millions of points of data to go ahead and automate the first two, to really go ahead and enable nurses, patients, and physicians to be able to deliver care, to be able to synthesize the total amount of data you have about somebody and be able to apply that in real time. So if you think about it, we take symptoms, your EHR data, your claims data, your genetics, your vitals, your sensors. We synthesize all of that in real time, leveraging our big physiological model, which leverages the hundreds of millions of points of data, so that we can calculate the acute and chronic differential diagnoses, and then determine your uh, personalized care guidance from investigative, therapeutic, et cetera, planning. We've built this on data. We've analyzed hundreds of gigabytes of raw data, taking stuff from available from HSS to data sets like your prevalence data, your Medicare data, we've, you know, data mined huge amounts of things from PubMed, et cetera. And all of that has been synthesized and then reviewed by our physicians, in which we've actually now just recently calculated, spent over 20,000 physician hours analyzing and reviewing that data. And through all of that, we have created about a, over 140 million different probabilistic data points that we can apply in real time with continuous predictive probabilistic learning algorithms. So what does all this mean? Well, let's go ahead and look at two very simple example use cases of the platform. One happens to be a nurse in a triage location, triaging a patient in terms of hyper-personalization. The other happens to be triage via SMS, and that's actually happening today in rural India. So let's go through and look at the two options. So here we go through, and let's say we have a 42-year-old male, 5'9". Say a stomach pain and a fever. And this is just basically data entry, but this can be passed from an EHR or other interfaces. Once again, this is just an app that sits on top of the platform and leverages all its APIs. And let's go ahead and get analysis. So what it's doing now in real time is calculating the differential diagnosis. So we see up top here right now, it thinks the triage level three, which is go to the office or urgent care. And here, your top level most likely causes for that particular situation. On the left-hand side, it shows the particular set of questions you want to ask to help rule in or rule out emergencies. And all these are entirely contextual to the situation. So let's say a moderate stomach pain, a mild fever. Let's go ahead and say no to these things. But it knows to ask these additional questions because we haven't answered them or they're very relevant for this particular situation. And let's say no to all of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that, reanalyze that, and now we can see we've actually had a change in differential diagnosis, a change in the potential acuity. And here right now we're showing the top 20 of approximately 239 different options. Beyond this, it's the nurse advice. So this is the one place where we connect back out into Medline. So from taking the synthesis of all that data, instead now we're also reaching back out to show people where things are coming from. Um, second of all, in terms of the upstreams and downstreams. So what are the underlying causative factors that you want to be thinking about past dealing with the acute situation for this particular individual? And then also what type of complications are you going to be worried about? What labs are relevant? And we also, one of the things we do is we all explain why anything in particular is relevant. And obviously you can sit there and say, you know, give a response and then it'll update the entire differential. And your treatment options, same type of thing. And subsequently on the chronic analysis, where are you compared to someone healthy your age? What's your health age in terms of what's the same risk profile you have as someone healthy at what age? Your chronic risk profile, your biggest bangs for your buck, 
and what type of monitoring is relevant for this individual. So what we've done here is showed that a nurse very quickly can go through, triage an individual, and also do a health risk assessment in a very quick time frame, but that's hyper-personalized. In fact, if you have a you know, previous condition of diabetes or hypertension, the entire differential changes. And that's fundamentally important because as we look at people with multiple different diagnoses, chronic conditions, et cetera, it's key to be able to take those things into account when we're triaging and analyzing. So this is just one use case of that, for example, a nurse in Kentucky. However, let's go through to a different example. Can the same platform be used in India, uh, in a rural population? So let's go through here. So today, let's say you had a young girl in rural India, takes five, you know, six hours of travel to get to a clinic, and fundamentally, in all clinical transactions, there's three activities. You're you know, gathering the clinical data, you're doing a decision making, and you're directing follow-up. But what if you can automate the clinical data gathering? What if you can accelerate the decision making? What if you can automate the direction follow-up? And that's really actually what we've done over in India, what we call 10x care delivery. So fundamentally, what we've done is we've empowered healthcare directors in India to basically let us SMS the, uh, the system as to what the current situation is. The system will automatically go and provide them the appropriate next set of questions that they should be asking so they can create a detailed history. The system then automatically generates a SOAP note, which they can then pass on to a physician, and a disposition can be done very quickly. So for example, and then here it's going to ask you, do I have any of the following? And the answer is no. Then it's going to take that into account, ask the next set of questions. No. And then we can go ahead here, and it automatically generates a SOAP note, which details all the information provided, the potential acuity level that happens to be, and really what cough or what are the potential diagnoses that are indicative of this particular situation. So what we've seen here is two very different use cases of, clinical G of the platform. So just jumping back here, since I have a few more minutes, uh, in terms of clinical GPS, we can go through and say, let's say we change the person's background. So we had angina, asthma, and maybe say diabetes, for example. And so in this particular case, not too much, but let's do a new one. So let's say we had a 64-year-old, same height and weight. And so I'm just very quickly going through, but what we'll see here now is that though for a stomach ache, this person is diabetic, et cetera, and we're looking at very different sets of details. So it really does take into account new information. So we can take a lab, add the lab, say that was high, say the EKG was abnormal, update and analyze that. But what we really wanted to show here is that in real time is able to take not only, you know, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 different types of inputs, but take basically a huge wealth of information that you have over the entire longitudinal patient data and be able to apply that in real time to help people make decisions immediately. And as we can see here, now the entire uh, differential here has changed. So, there we go. So what we reviewed here is we've shown a nurse in a triage location able to do very complex differential diagnoses, as well as more importantly, triaging the person accordingly to the right care path. And then we've also been to show the, how the platform can go ahead and support text messaging uh, in India and basically pro helping provide people, people care in a very rural environment. So how do you go ahead and get your care personalized at scale? Well, you can leverage the API. What we focus on is how to go ahead and reduce fundamentally the barrier to personalizing your health IT applications. So the entire API is a RESTful web service API that's made available. Uh, you know, it's leveraging basically tens and hundreds of uh, gigabytes of data, leveraging a lot of the open data sets provided by HSS, which was a complete boon. It really de dramatically influenced things, and we're obviously looking more and more data from HSS. And thank you very much to Todd Bark, Will, and uh, Lysia for all that, you know, great data. And um, that's uh, fundamentally what Medgo does. We power the, you know, hyper-personalized health economy and redefine human health management through big analytics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ash. Um, so I should remind everyone that the, uh, the Twitter tag, the, is, the hashtag is uh, health data, hashtag health data. And um, it's OK. Don't, you're not going to be offending us if you are tweeting, because we can't see you up here. So uh, the lights blind us. Um, but do know that we are reading what you're tweeting backstage. <laughs>